uh, recording recording so we're looking at the power cube version 16.9 which is our next iteration of the power cube which is uh, 30 uh, 18 times 2 36 horsepower power unit with a bill of materials I'm looking at the bill of materials and it says to me about 1711 is that a, is that about right Tom that's the best number I've got yeah uh, that does not include the steel does it or um. Well, the I had frame. some steel in there, but, but uh, the main tubular frame is not included, no. Without the rectangular frame, that's about, that could add up to, a do, it's about a dollar a pound for that, so however much it weighs, if it weighs like 200, it would be $200, don't know the exact weight. But the idea is that we are now using two two engines instead of one to make it more modular so you can run one engine either one by its one or two or both <laughs> one or both engines at a time for either 18 or 36 horsepower um, any um, any challenges here Tom uh, maybe go through how we uh, this the show the size of the power cube right now so we're looking at what is it 28 inches high I'm looking at seven holes so each hole is four inches one two three four five six seven times four is 28 inches high and then we have two four six what is it two four six eight ten eleven so 44 inches wide and how deep yeah it's uh nine holes wide nine by eleven by seven nine eleven all right and if you want to get this file, go to uh, the OSC Power Cube, searching the 3D warehouse under Power Cube, and then you'll find Tom G. Click on his thing, and you'll be led to the Power Cube version 16.9 here. So yeah, it works um, within the warehouse. Let's see if it lets me rotate things. Uh, I pulled it up. Let's see. Is it letting me rotate stuff? possibly can but it's not doing it for me but I'm at least viewing it yeah okay it's slow it's a little slow but yeah it works it works so I'm observing that on, on uh, within a Google warehouse okay um, excellent so the two engines the mounting uh, the main issues now are what do we need for the hardware to mount like mounting plates and everything else is there any CNC cutting involved Tom uh, yeah, yes, there will be. Let me let me grab the screen uh, screen share again, and I'll show you what I'm looking at. Yeah. And uh, this is the completed uh, power cube as it is, and uh, they, there will be some uh, holes cut and, and some plates cut. Um, let's let's go quickly over here to the. Uh, this is going to be the main plate that the engines are mounted on. Uh -huh. And this, I'm saying this is going to be a uh, half inch thick steel and six inches wide. And then we'll cut these holes in it right here for the engine mount. And then we'll have these uh, little mounting brackets on, on the bottom. These will be welded to the bottom of that plate so that the, uh, it, so that it'll secure it to the frame by one inch bolts. Uh, why aren't we bolting through the top? because you don't want to have a bolt conflict? Um, well, let me show you. Um, it's because on this side over here, the geometry of the engines is that we just don't have room to put the holes. We, we, don't, we can't put the bolts uh -huh. here. It's not fitting. The other side is working, but not this on the, side. On this, on this one side, and then on the other side, uh, I needed some place to put the battery, and so it, it goes over here. Yeah. So, so welding it, just taking it and welding it, the plate, the bottom of this, this will make it. Uh, yeah, it'll be a plenty secure. Uh, mount. Uh huh. Of course, we're going to need to make sure we get those centered correctly. That's something that uh, to work on for me. Is that how it's going to look? No, that's just a mistake in the CAD. Yeah, this thing, I, I must have moved the engine a little bit. Uh, Geometry and then, then it, it moved the, the mounting plate here, but it 
didn't accommodate uh, account for where the holes are, so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have to readjust it. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a public service announcement. SketchUp is not our official platform, but FreeCAD is, but Tom's using SketchUp for now. Uh, but yeah, SketchUp is... Uh, we, did some rework of the brick press in in, um, in FreeCAD. It's it's pretty good. So we're gonna aim to get full fabrication drawings. I got some help from people at Lulzbot on generating really professional fabrication drawings using FreeCAD. You can put in a nice template. So we'll get up get out our OSC template. We should try to see if we can do that for this time around. If we get a remote documentation team, I'll, I'll try to see if I can pull in some of the people from OSC France and other guys to do a. Uh, a documentation sprint um, during the actual build so we get the instructional the real build instructional at the same time that as we finish the power cube so that should be exciting excellent idea mm -hmm. um, this is another plate here that's going to need to be CNC cut this okay right so so the apertures on the hydraulic tank are at the bottom yeah well, it's got these same kind of mounting brackets that I use for the engine, but but it's also got this main plate here that the the hydraulic tank, the reservoir is going to sit on. Um, Quarter inch, half it, inch. It's, it's mounting is like this, and then we'll have to uh, uh, drill some holes here and mount some bolts for the for the to hold the hydraulic reservoir in place over here. Uh, are there conflicts there? To how are you going to get a strap in there? Or? Let's see, those holes go through the frame of the the actual power cube frame as well? No, I wanted them to just go on this metal plate, this quarter inch plate, and then we can drill a hole and basically uh, uh, put the bolt through there and weld it in place and then grind the head off. Or just use all thread. You know, we've done that before. Okay. So, and so, so that we have a flush face on the bottom. So put a strap on it, like a pipe strap? Or something. Yeah. Well, I. Yeah, well, I, I was. I was thinking just have a bolt sticking through here. Right, and, and how? What's the strap to attach it? Quarter inch plate on the bottom. Oh wait, that's part of the hydraulic reservoir. It's that's the holes in the hydraulic reservoir. Yeah. No, describe the mounting of the reservoir so it doesn't fall off. Oh, so it's got the flange so on the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. I see that. So I just needed a plate to, to mount the hydraulic reservoir on something we could weld to for, for uh, structural support. That, that's why this plate and this plate would be welded to the uh, that plate underneath the hydraulic reservoir. Yeah, it looks good. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Um, the, the geometry uh, got, got kind of wonky in here because this... Um, this filter, being a suction filter, it's much larger than the other filter we were going to use. And uh, but but at any rate, I was able to figure out a way uh, to get the, the plumbing to go. And it, it just occurred to me just now, I did not include this in the BOM. This is just a, a one and one quarter inch plumbing coming out the bottom, going through the one and one quarter inch here. And, and I did find on uh, hydraulic warehouse they had the street seat. It's a one and one and one quarter inch, and and uh, by the way, Hydraulic Warehouse has excellent prices too, better than Surplus Center. Oh, nice! Is that yeah. within um, HydraulicsWarehouse.com? Very nice. Okay, yeah. so and, and so uh, this this it goes all one and a quarter inch plumbing into here, and then it goes one inch to each one of the suction hoses in, into the bottom of the pump. So that should be a uh, pretty free flow of uh, hydraulic fluid. Okay, talk to me about uh, boltability and bolt bolting conflicts or or wrenchability here. So uh, you put the do you do the the mounting? Like, are there going to be you going to be able to turn these things? Is there space? How did you consider that yet? Or do we need live swivels? Not live swivels, but just swivels. Yeah, all over not, the place? not on the suction plumbing. That, that's. Uh... No, I, we, we should be able to, to tighten these in place and just do it one time and have it stay there. Now, one um, thing I was thinking yeah. is that on the bottom of this uh, uh, filter, we may want to put some sort of plate to support it on, on the bottom there. Because this thing being so big and full of fluid, uh, I don't know, that thing might weigh you know 12 pounds or so. 
bouncing on up and down on the tractor, that would be quite a lever action on this uh, pipe over here. See what uh -huh. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So we may want may want to put a piece of uh, and we could bolt it on this bolt over here, and just put a plate underneath to support the uh, filter. Uh huh. Right. Can you add that in so we have a detail of that? Uh, probably. Yeah. Can we do a long, a threaded rod that? Then what? Then weld weld a plate to the threaded rod. Or something, I or think when, I think when we go to bolt this bolt on to the frame, we can just have like like a almost a angle iron go under here and, and an angle go and, and have it go straight underneath the oil filter right there. Right, so that's going to have to be a very precise angle, so you're not straining on the tank. Okay, that that connection to the tank there. I mean, we literally. Right, so you're thinking you're using the, the bolt holes of this filter? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. These right here, that, that's what those holes are made for, is so that you can mount it. And I think they're already tapped and threaded. So we just need to get a get a piece of uh, quarter inch and, and uh, drill our holes out in there and, and then have it go over to the frame and... and uh, bolt on either, either one one side or the other hydraulic reservoir is is nine nine gallon yeah, it's a little I think it's closer to ten nine point eight gallons okay so ten gallons that's pretty good um, right now when that reservoir vibrates up and down we gotta make sure that that be nice to have that third point somehow because uh, if you fix it by the by the filter uh, there's still by that weight I mean that's you talking about a hundred pounds of hydraulic fluid there or so hundred pound weight there that's gonna be on that three-point connection that's gonna be wobbling it up and down so we make sure we don't bend and up bending off the the fitting from the bottom of the hydraulic reservoir is the reservoir oh, yeah the reservoir is metal yes you know what gauge we can go over to surplus center and see right quick uh, see if I got it in my history why I'll just look into your it's not in your bill materials oh it is it's easy quicker to find it this way Go to reservoirs, click on hydraulic reservoirs, that's like the fourth or fifth one down. Right here, 9.8 gallon. Ten and twelve gauge black powder coated steel. Ten or twelve gauge? Yeah. It says ten and twelve gauge. Oh, magnetic drain plug. Well, that's interesting. Ten and twelve. Twelve gauge is an eighth inch. So that's a it's an eighth inch. Uh -huh. And ten is a little fatter. Okay. Right. And uh, so one thing I was uh, that I did have in the design at one point, and then I, I backed off of it again, is uh, this little mounting strap right here. So I can take this mounting thing, and we can move it over four inches. Sorry, which mounting strap? The one right here that I just moved. Uh -huh. And so th this will put it more towards the corner yeah. of the uh, reservoir. And then, of course, the reservoir, I guess I've been moving things around, but um, we would move it all the way over towards the, the corner so it would uh, be able to weld directly on that, like that. Mm -hmm. So now, as far as the support, I know we, we've, uh, 
we've got this at this corner hanging out in the open, but we do have it supported uh, kind of a, along a diagonal with these two counting brackets here. Right. Um, so as far as, it, you know, I didn't see an easy way to get support out to this other corner. Right. Unless we use hang line and come out and make a frame over here. Yeah. Right, possibly a weld on of a of a four by four quarter angle underneath there, but yeah, it's uh, tricky. Okay. Um, what other features are we looking at? So we've got the the fan is sized for how much? Fan, or rather, the no, fan, the cooler. I rechecked all the hydraulic uh, parameters, you know, the hose sizes again, and and it, it did turn out okay to use three quarter inch plumbing for the uh, for the return plumbing, and and uh, that was well within specs. Uh, okay. And, and of course, if you go with the real conservative specs, then it's not. But but the, the I think it's the FRP specs. They say 0.73 inches is okay. And so I I just kept it all with the standard. Uh, uh, Three-quarter inch plumbing for the same hydraulic reservoir, and the the plumbing going there, and and the uh, hydraulic ports over there as well. What's the rating on the reservoir? It, is it rated by some gallon per minute figure? Sorry, the the cooler. Oh, the cooler. That was from Amazon. That's this one right here, and it was saying, uh, let's see. It's actually a Hayden uh, cooler. The model we can pull up the specs, 1268. 1268, it says. I think it's it said it's good for over 20 gallons per minute. More like 30, which kind of surprised me. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And that's a that's a three quarter inch plumbing on that thing. Okay. Twelve by eighteen inches. Okay. So, um, of course, the the pressure plumbing is going to be half inch. The return plumbing is three quarter inch, and then the suction plumbing is. Uh, one and a quarter inch from the tank and then one inch to the pumps. Okay, and this sounds good to me as far as the outlet on the hydraulic pump. It's a quick coupler at the pump. Is that what you got? Right, that's it right here. It's just mounted directly on the pump. That's, that's good. Oh, uh, then it's highly Highly modular, so you're right. basically and, leaving uh, it at that. The mm -hmm. other thing, the other thing it'll let you do is it'll be very flexible. Uh, like if you just want to fire up one engine pump for just a, a short application, or if you want to uh, split the fluid flow, you can have total uh, uh, control over that. You can split it and plumb it however you want. Yeah, I think that's a good and, idea. Uh, um, also, it, it does have this uh, quarter inch uh, quick coupler here. This is for the controls. And so that comes out of the oil filter to basically drains directly in the tank. Right. Um, it would be nice to include a, a check valve out of the, the pump. I think we should do that because that way when you're combining two flows you don't have to worry about including the check valve in, in your system or do we modularize it at the valve level do we modularize that within the power cube or take it downstream to the valve um, I, I would uh, look a little bit closer at pressure relief valves I, I don't know if pressure relief valve has a uh, uh, check valve capability or not but that might be one thing but actually, actually I don't think it does no. But, um, but uh, we also uh, did not include a pressure relief valve in this one. And 
and that, that's uh, something I, I would like to see, but anyway, in the time frame that I had on this, I needed to get something out so we can do the workshop next week or uh, two weeks from now. Well, I mean, any valve, if you're running anything, you're going to be running through a valve. So I think that's okay, right? Right. Well, the, these things right here are going to act as a check valve. If you don't have anything connected to it, it's not going to let fluid flow. Um, so that's that's one thing right there. Yeah, but they're not a check valve. They're, if you push fluid against it, it's going to push the ball down. No, it's... it's no, when it's, um, when it's connected, it functions as... No, no, but you see what I'm saying? I'm talking about the, the concept of... Of course, when it's disconnected, it's not active, right? But when it's connected, then you have back feed, back pressure into one of the engines, right? All right. So we need to prevent that. So say you're in a... Let's look at a use scenario. We're, we're, running, we're running where both of these are feeding into a single valve, right? So if you yeah. turn on one... You're going to be feeding power into the other engine if you don't have a check valve. So that really needs to be here. It's either here or at the at the valve, but at the valve it's much more cumbersome because that the valve themsel valves themselves are heavy. Then you get these big protrusions out of the valves for the check valve. I would say we put the yeah just throw a check valve in there. I'd say no. Uh, what does a check valve look like? Uh, look at it. I don't know how big. I don't know how big it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those things that a half inch check valve. Look at that one right there, twenty bucks. Five psi cracking. Yeah, yeah, that's what we would need. Otherwise, you literally, when whenever you're running, you'd have to disconnect the hose from that one engine if you're running on one power cube. That's not practical if we don't have a check valve somewhere. So, so a check valve is absolutely needed. question is where, okay, you, where you we want, put it. You want uh, two, two check valves, one per yeah. engine? Yeah, because we're assuming, what I would do is assume that we're not, we don't have the favorite engine because of kind of like wear issues what I would do is whenever you're running it and you want to run on one if you're doing it one day use the other engine the next day you know so you kind of like wear them out evenly right. as opposed to having one engine that's abused and kind of like the the master engine either one could be the master engine yep yeah. um, do we want to have the battery in there, or do we want to full cord it? Um, I think you're going to need the battery in it to, to run the fan, if nothing else. Oh, yes. Would the, this thing wouldn't run without a battery at all? It has it would, to. It but it wouldn't cool. Oh, oh. Well, Wait, why yeah, not? You might be able to run the, uh, the, the, the fan off the... the uh, yeah, I don't know what happens to the output if you don't have a fan on it. Nineteen ninety-five. Oh, you mean you don't know what happens to uh, to the charging or to the power when you have no battery? Right. I I would normally, you know, when you charge, you want a uh, a charger will. On a, on a 12 volt cell, it will raise the voltage to about 14.5 volts and let it, you know, that that's its cutoff voltage where it cuts off current, you know, to let it charge. Yeah. So it'll be probably give you 14.5 volts in a fan, and I'm guessing it it would be okay, you know, just to let the, let it run, let the fan run off of that voltage directly. Did you find any? Uh, has anyone got support for that engine? Does anyone is anyone familiar what happens with? No, I haven't seen any aftermarket things for it. Um, okay. All right. So on the bill of materials there, we want to basically um, go through this list and get it all right. Let's see. Is there any questions on... Um, is there any dubious... The only, question, 
The only question I have is on this nipple. I want to measure how, how long that is. I thought it was eight inches, but when they go to measure a nipple, do they measure it from the, the uh, uh, all the way from end to end, the whole thing, including yeah. the edge? Yeah. Okay, because that was uh, seven and thir three sixteenths, so... Yeah, that'll, that'll be about eight inches. And I left a little play in there, so we'll, we should have room. Right. And those suction hoses there, you don't see any conflicts on on uh, bendability and ease. If you take a look at uh, the the way the hoses are bending, does that look really look good? Can you point, point yeah, to it I did. again? Yeah, I did. I went through it pretty pretty thoroughly. Uh, is this going to be a galvanized nipple or black iron? Uh. Or does it matter? Black iron's probably better. Probably. Well, let's let's go look at the hoses. Um, now I, I went and, and specifically I, I found this uh, one inch forty five degree uh, hose bar here. Uh huh. So, so that I could minimize the amount of, of uh, you know it would point directly at this other one, and so it, it'll it'll. Hold on a second. Like, Wouldn't be. Like Okay, hold on a second right there. Wouldn't it be easier to have a straight one coming out of the pump and then a straight one coming out of that so it's just a plain 90 degree angle with, with the hose? That looks like an easier proposition. Uh, I'd like to think so, but I, I, don't, I don't think we would be able to get the bend radius. The bend radius on that, that one inch hose, um, and, and it's uh, steel reinforced and all that, those, those things are really tough to bend. This this whole thing here is like what uh, seven inches. Okay, but what you drew there, that's a tighter bend than we would need with the. Uh, what you drew there, that's much tighter than what we would need with the uh, actual uh, single ninety degree. I mean, look at that. That's that's tight. Or or if you unless you didn't draw it accurately, but but that's a really tight angle what you drew. We can definitely get that kind of angle. No. Uh, you know what I would recommend is in the interest of making sure that the, the workshop goes okay, maybe yep. we just get it both. Yeah. And, yep. and try, try what works. Okay. I think that's a good idea because you can never really tell those those hose bends unless you've done it. Yeah. Probably ought to get some extra hose. Do you have extra one inch hose? No. We'll just get okay. some more. Okay, let, and okay, so that's okay, that's a question there. Let me, and then so the other one. This one is, is a bit longer, so this one is probably not going to be nearly as much of an issue. That's like uh, six inches to here, and then it's uh, all the way to the other side at nine inches. Yeah, that's it looks pretty not, good. still not very far. And again, I use that uh, 45 degree one here, because if I had it coming straight out, going over here. Right. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know, it might not be that bad looks decent um, right. but but what if you had a 90 and it went straight back no go back to it if you had a 90 and you went straight back and then once again do the one out. yeah so the instead of the 45 you got a 90 that goes straight back towards the suction filter and then it bends up You know, that could also, we should try that too. I uh, should probably get an, an extra spare 90 there and a straight one coming out of the pump. What's the distance between oh. the pump and um, and a suction suction oh, so you, pipe? So you want, do we, do we just want to do one side, do straight and straight? Well, it looks like a similar one, a similar theory could apply to the to the one on the left hand side. Um, where my pointer? No, you don't see my pointer. The the second pump that you're showing is that on your left hand side? Yeah. Okay, the one on the left hand side. If you go straight down and do a ninety around the filter, and the and then instead of the forty five barb, you've got it ninety going kind of like under the filter. That might be that might be also doable. 
because it looks pretty good right here, but we don't know what it's going to be like in um, in practice. Let's try for both. Okay, um, so let me let me make a let me make a note on here because I gotta get uh, um, two, uh, and that's gonna be one inch. Uh, and these things, uh, the ones that actually go into the motor and into the pump, um, yeah, they're they're gonna be SAE twelve. Okay. And then the other ones are going to be uh, NPT one. Let's see. And those pumps are what? Two hundred. NPT one. Yeah. Yeah. Pumps are two hundred a piece. Oh man, the that is not better in a hydraulic warehouse. Uh, well, you know, I haven't really looked at the hydraulic warehouse for it. Uh, Let's take a look at it, because those kinds of pumps should be like a hundred bucks, possibly. Well, Prince is kind of a, you know, they like a higher price on things. And here's hydraulic warehouse. Yeah, well, until we start 3D printing them. <laughs> ABS is 6,000 PSI. And then you do metal gears inside, possibly. Be worth worth looking into. Well, I bet you. Not have pumps. Okay. I bet you if you put plates like bonding plates, because I'm using some 3D plastic on on the brick press with sandwich between plates. I think that kind of a metal plastic composite can be very strong. Uh, we have to look at that. Okay. Um, all right. But yeah, the this is silly. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not finding hydraulic pumps on on the hydraulic warehouse website, which is ridiculous. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you look at look at eBay and as well as Amazon for that? No. Not yet. We should take a look at that because because um, there's always something. So we need to get extra hose as well. Yeah. Uh, so I had two feet of hose in there right now, which is more than what I deem we need. Uh, what did I do with it? Here we are, suction hose. So we'll just get four instead. Get two extra feet. Okay. Now, now while we're on the subject of hose, I did want to show you also the uh, the return hose. I'm not going to use those those uh, fittings. I'm just going to use the uh, hose barb here. This is just going to straight street T to a hose barb, and this is going to street T on the other side, and then the same kind of thing for the hose feeding the feeding the hydraulic uh, cooler. It's just a hose barb and it's going to uh, the, the, the return couplers over there. And so this shouldn't be very high pressure at all. No. So I, I, I don't see this as being a problem. Uh, right. Yeah, we didn't do that before? Yeah, we didn't. We used dedicated hoses then, right? That's a good idea. Yeah, I, initially I'd drawn up the using the real three thousand psi hoses, but that's that was overkill. Yeah, no, it's like the what I'm learning is you know redoing the brick press and now this again. There's always great optimizations that can happen. It's like it's unending. Just simple things that make significant difference. Yeah, and let me, let me show you this. Is these are the two uh, uh, return ports. 
for the quick couplers, and I have them pointing down because I don't want yeah. stuff getting in, into the port. Yep. And then also I had them suspended by this one little bracket right here, and so that that will allow the the, the, sw the these couplers to swivel out a little bit, so you can easily connect hoses to it and get to it easy. Oh yeah. Well, the only disadvantage being that you need two hands then to hold it. But you well, do that I mean, anyway, this thing, right? This thing can hold it pretty well in place, I would think. Right. It makes it, I mean, a swivel makes it a little harder to hold when you... Because you really want... It's easy to connect things when they're super stiff. Once it yeah, starts wobbling, well. it's a little harder to make connections. Um, That's but, true. You get, get oil all over your hands and it makes everything hard to grab. Yeah. Well, next year we're going to go to canola oil with additives. <laughs> we are. You know, the eco tractor build, that's that's the plan. Oh, really? Wow, uh -huh. okay. It's a super cunning so plan. So, at any rate, I, I took it and I broke it into pieces like this so that we can uh, do modular type assembly on yeah. it. Yeah. And we could have the crews, uh, each one of them, jump on one piece of it and, and get it done. Yeah. That's good. So what else? What you got? I think that's about it. So, so um, let's see. Any other questions on the overall power cube? There's. Let's see. Cooler is good. Any? Uh, what about the mounting of the cooler on the? Mounting a fan on a cooler is that I mean those uh, the experience has been in that kind of st it's been f a bunch of the other ones like the from a former batch a lot of them ended up falling off. Um, are we good on that? What's the connection there well, like? I, it, yes, I was actually going to use the same cooler and the same uh, mounting technique. Um, uh, Show perhaps, me the mounting technique. Uh, perhaps what we could do is put a lock. Uh, nut on the back side of these these uh, you know screws that go through the rubber bushing. Um. Well, first of all, those what should be bigger them? washers there. Yeah, those things are, let's see, so say it again, what are we going to do? Well, perhaps put a put a lock nut on the back side of this, this uh, nut that's on here to keep keep it from unscrewing, but I don't think that'll unscrew, though. Um, it, yeah, that, that's right, it screws in from the front side. Well, uh, the other thing that has happened to these is that the... I guess your vibration or shaking or whatever, sure. the, the thing could just slid off uh, of the rubber mount. Right. So um, some, maybe just taking some wire and wiring it, uh, you know, to where it's physically held against this uh, expanded seal. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, we can tighten them tighter maybe or check them regularly. Um. There's a standoff. How does the fin? How do the fins not not touch the expanded metal mesh? It's because of that rubber piece, right? Right. It has a little rubber thing underneath here. This you know, I think plastic, uh, thing here. It has a piece of black plastic that goes on this side, and then you put a a, a piece of rubber on that too. Yeah, yeah, that's the fan fan to the cooler, saying the cooler to the expanded mesh. Yeah. Um, okay, so putting a bigger washer, is there enough space to put a bigger washer underneath the head of the the cooler bolt? I don't know. I, I think we can uh, get it to try. 
that, that depends on how much uh, meat is left over after we uh, uh, tighten the, the screw here that, and it expands that rubber. <clears throat> I think the real deal is maybe we weren't tightening it enough and because when you tighten it, it draws this rubber together and it makes it swell. And that's what right. gives you the mechanical support. Right. So I'm, I'm a little bit cautious about over tightening it too because right. it's copper tubes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, make sure we've got bigger washers there because, I mean, that's like the way you drew it right now, that's can easily slip, just through the fall through the cracks actually. So and that's what happened before too. Yeah, it could have just slipped and then it it lost the tension and got loosened further. Yeah. So I think if we do a big washer there, that might address it. Now the one thing I did want to ask you about the frame uh, and, and uh, as far as welding, when you go to weld this this seam right here. Mm -hmm. where, and I'm thinking these two, I, I may not have it drawn exactly right, but these, yeah. these two are, are going to touch. And so we should probably uh, grind these back a little bit to make sure that when we weld it, that it gets good adherence to, to the supporting tube going this way, and also all three of them are joined together at this joint. Right. That should go in the procedure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's see what else we got. Yeah. And the battery will be a kind of a, a battery box like we had last time. Yeah, kind of like this. <coughs> and we'll just weld those four pieces together and then. then take it and weld it on the uh, bottom, on the top side of this uh, plate over here, the engines are mounted on. Can we do, can we avoid those, um, can we do straight corners? Uh, cause straight the, corners. Yeah, cause doing, cutting the angle on uh, angle iron. Oh, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, we should be able to do that. You have to get a little fancier with the straight cut. Yeah, the straight cut is fine. No, no need uh, for this deluxe feature here. <laughs> <laughs> right. As far as the bolt pattern on the bottom of the engines, do you know that, that spec? Uh, you and I, uh, you, you got a ruler and we measured it the other day. Right. How <laughs> how much do we trust it? Was that can we trust it to do CNC? Uh, let's see what I, I think the easiest thing to do was so you drew it up uh, I can print it up on a sheet of paper and see if it matches the that would be a good exercise right print it out yeah and match uh, it as I remember there was there was uh, what I drew on the engine itself where it mounts I drew it exactly but if I remember right one of them was a round hole and one was like a slot mm -hmm. so it gives you some room to move now the uh, the other thing is the uh, the shafts. Uh, I did ask you about that alignment tool for the shafts. Yeah. Do you, do you remember if you have that or is that something I have? I don't remember where we left it. Um, I mean, I think you, I think you took all the supplies. I'm not aware okay. of you leaving that. Okay, um, I'll probably have it. I just need to go back and uh, find out what I did with it. <laughs> Jonathan's going to be here this time, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and this deal also is something we're going to have to fabricate. Something to redirect oh, the yes. exhaust from the one engine. So it doesn't uh, heat up the gas tank. And I just drew it like this. If you have any any, any ideas about this, how it should be otherwise, let me know. There's those, and you got the bolt pattern there? correct or so? Oh, oh, well, I don't know. I, I, I have a bolt pattern I drew on there, but I, I don't know that it matches anything on the engine. Okay, so that would be... Um, 
I mean, you could do it out of eighth inch steel. I mean, we should... Okay, those kinds of things can kill our time, so... Um... I gave you the numbers, right? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't get the exact numbers on this. Uh, you, you, uh, you mentioned something about around two inches between the bolts, but I, I looked at, at the, the picture that I had more closely, and I, I didn't see any bolts here. I saw them up on top of the... Uh, the exhaust thing up here. So I, I need clarification on that. Because we got to keep the heat away from that fuel tank. Right. The fuel tank is metal, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think it's metal. Okay, so... You want me to take a measurement again? Yeah. And we, we, need, to, we need to find out what size bolt goes in there, too. Okay, so we need, we need to do that. We should draw it up for CNC cut. Because, I mean, that can eat up our time to get that right. And it's got to be it's got to be pretty nice. Yeah. So just eighth inch, eighth inch steel. Yeah, it doesn't even need to be that thick. Right. It would be best sixteenth, but they don't really have sixteenth inch, do they? They might. I don't know. I'll check. But but I mean, you know, if you go thin enough to sixteenth, I mean, you're almost talking about thin enough. You could just cut it with tin snips. Yeah, not really, almost, but yeah. Um, no, you uh, could, you could. Other, yeah, we just get it th thin enough. Special cutting. Let me see. Let me zoom in on it. Here we are. It's this little deal right here. This is a little the little bracket that I drew up to to help suspend the uh, quick couplers over there. Mm-hmm. And so that it could bolt to the frame, and yet, and yet, let the uh, let that show uh, me the plumbing uh, go through there. Show me from the top. Okay, can you make that out of one piece so we just bend it along a perforation? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's do that. We'll get it cut. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that would make it easy. Yeah, and, and we can re-weld the, the cut as well. Probably make the hole on top a little bigger, no? Or just use bigger bolts, like... Because if you use yeah, to hold up that uh, to hold up the, the um, uh, uh, hydraulic plumbing, you know, it, it's not going to require that much. I figured a half inch should be fine. Yeah, but then you need a like a big washer, like a couple of washers, so you don't fall in the hole on the other side. Yeah. So how big? Quart three quarters. Yeah. Three quarter or one? I mean, one is overkill, but unique part count. You were using other well, three quarter. If, if we go with one, that that makes it easy because then it, you don't have to get another size bolt. Well, yeah, that's why. Yeah, minimize the unique part count. Just go one. Yeah. Are you keeping track of the bolts too, or no? You didn't put that in. Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. I put in a I one. I don't have them all down yet. See, I've got the bolts here, flat washer. Yeah. Now, now this I'll put in there that we do need the nine, 7 sixteenths. As I remember, that was the size of the bolt that you said we needed to hold the pump to the bracket. That's on the SAE A uh, pump mounting. Pump to the bracket, okay. 7 sixteenths is yeah. right, yeah. It's almost half inch, yeah. Got a spell washer right also. Put an A in there. So 
Probably yeah. a spell checker didn't catch it. Right. So we're at seventeen sixty two plus the steel, so about two thousand dollars for thirty six horsepower. And once we start melting steel it's gonna be five dollars for the entire power cube. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Okay. Now um, do you have time to order these and I can pay you back? Uh, I'm I'm kind of stretched for time right now. Yeah. Okay. I have yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been a very busy week. Okay. Uh, at work. Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. Can you fill in the as much detail as you can? And I yeah, I'm also quite stretched. I gotta do the hydraulics order for the brick press, and we're changing stuff around like new valves and stuff it's better because once again price optimization um, but yeah there's All right, well, well let, let, let's correspond about it then I'll, I'll let you know if I can carve out enough time to do that we'll, we'll yeah because we got to get that in like uh, the surplus center it takes like five days so it I mean we got to get it by like Thursday I mean like tomorrow really we should get this out yeah. um, right like ASAP possibly if I have any spare time today I gotta but I gotta verify the CAD files for the brick press I gotta do that plus order the hydraulics for that so I might have a long night tonight but um, yeah I guess we can possibly wait till tomorrow worst case being someone drives out there <laughs> if they no, don't no, get no. it let's not do that again did we do that before? Yeah. Oh, okay. I went to Wisconsin, I think. That was for a brick press. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, sounds good. So if you can fill in any of the other links here, because you got the, the writing, if you can fill in the links so it's easier. And... Um, and as far as the hardware parts, like the bolts, ordered that where? Online or hardware store? Uh, well, you went to the place downtown to get it in Kansas City, but uh, how, how many were we need? We need 12 of them. Yeah, not a lot. We, we, we just said uh, 13. Yeah, we've got those. We've got we've got plenty of those one-inch bolts still. Okay. These just need to be long enough to make it through a four-inch member with some meat on either side. Yep. Nylon lock nut is right. That'll be good. I did not put flat washers, though. Do we need flat washers for it? Probably not. Um, not really. But they are to kind of... Yeah, we don't really need it. Um... Okay, sounds good. So that looks pretty good. And uh, so basically the for about 50% more more horsepower, we're actually paying paying less. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, the idea of the smaller engines being just way cheaper. Mhm. Mm uh -huh. Yeah. And then for the future work, we can definitely <laughs> I think it would be cool to have multiple of these, like even bigger, like possibly three or four, um, or just keep them in pairs of two, like each power cube has got two of them, but it wouldn't hurt to do like three or four even, I think that would be pretty cool to see how it works, but that's for the future. Okay, yeah, so that's good, design looks pretty good, um, yeah, okay, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's about it. Okay. Um, yeah, and if you could get me those um, the DXF files for for all those cuts, we can do that. And I'll get you the the muffler dimension as soon as I can. I'll try to go down there today. The muffler 
muffler? You mean for that little... Yeah, the little muffler little... extension. We gotta get, yeah. Yeah. So the dimensions I gave you last time, they were, they didn't make sense to you? I, I didn't see where the holes were. It looked like I, I didn't see any holes on the side over there. It looked like the holes were on the top. Okay. All right. I'll take a look at that again and get back to you. All right? All right. We'll talk to you then. Okay. Thanks a lot. This wraps up right. Power Cube 16.09. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.